Hi there. My name is Jeff Talkington, and I'm a systems engineer for Palo Alto Networks. For today's presentation, we're going to talk about how do we do a search for security profile objects within security policies, and then how do we make mass changes. So this presentation actually came from a question I got from one of my customers. And he came to me and said, Jeff, how do I do a search for security profile objects across all of my security policies? So if I've got uh, a profile like the default or strict profiles that come with the, my next generation firewall, or if I've created custom profiles, how can I search for those across all of my security policies? And then based on what I find, how can I do large scale changes? And I'll be honest, when he first asked me the question, I didn't have a good answer for him. So I had to go back and do some research, but we do have some good options as far as being able to do searches and then make the changes that we need to make. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So in order to do a search in our security policies for a specific object, I'm going to be referencing this documentation here from our admin guide. Now the caveat here is that this particular document isn't in the most current administrator's guide, the 8.0 or the 7.1 or even the 7.0 administrator's guide. It's in the 6.1 admin guide, but it is out there and it is available to use. And I'll go ahead and put a link uh, at the bottom of the video so you'll be able to see this as well. For the demonstration today, I'm going to focus specifically on the vulnerability protection profile and how we do a search for that. And then I'll show you how to do some mass changes of the vulnerability protection profile. But what I'm showing you today applies to any of the, the profiles that we would use like antivirus URL, anti-spyware, all of those. But we'll just focus on the vulnerability protection profile today. So if I scroll down here, you'll see that we have uh, some good documentation here that includes examples of the syntax that we're going to use to be able to do our search. In this case, I'll use this syntax right here. And you'll see that when we do a search, we're looking in the profile setting directory, into profiles, specifically into the vulnerability profiles, and then the member directory. You'll see we use the term EQ, and that stands for equals, or we can use NEQ for not equals. Um, and then we'll select what string we want to search for. In this case, the example uses strict, uh, and if you remember there's two standard profiles that come with a vulnerability profile uh, and that is default and strict but we can also create custom profiles and along with that we can do searches for the for the custom profiles so let's take a look at how this actually works in real life in production i've got a panorama box here um, and this will work the same with either Panorama or the next generation firewall when we're doing searches across security policies. And you'll see that I've put the syntax up here. Uh, and instead of using EQ for equals, I'm using NEQ for not equals. Um, now I've got a total of seven policies. And if we switch this over to equals strict, you'll see that none of them match to the strict profile. None of them are using it. If I change this over to default, we can see that one of them is using the default policy. But let's go back to not equals strict. And that's all of them. Okay, so very quickly though, I can sort through here and determine which ones are using which policy or which profile, excuse me, uh, and which ones aren't. And then that raises the question of, well, how do we do mass changes? So in this case where I've only got seven policies, it would be really easy for me to jump in here, go to actions and change my profile settings to whatever I want. So if I wanted this to be strict on the vulnerability protection, I would be able to do that. But how do I do this for 10 or 100 or 1000 policies in a production environment? Well, the easy way to do this or the best way to do this is to use our migration tool. Now, when most people think of the migration tool for Palo Alto Networks, they think of it as I can just pull in a firewall configuration from another vendor uh, and convert that over to Palo Alto Networks. And that is one function of the migration tool. 
but you need to understand there are three phases within the migration tool. And I'll do another video where we, we deep dive into the migration tool some more. Um, but for today, just understand that there are three phases to the migration tool. Phase one is the one that most people are familiar with, and that's pulling in um, a configuration from say Checkpoint or Cisco or Juniper, Juniper and turning that into a Palo Alto Networks configuration. That's phase one. And what we normally do is a direct one-for-one -one port and protocol rule translation from another vendor into Palo Alto Networks. Well, that gets us into phase two. Phase two is where we do app ID adoption. App ID is application identification, and it's where we're able to identify applications regardless of port or protocol. Now, we don't normally do this in phase one because when we're converting from another vendor, we want to reduce the number of variables in that conversion as much as possible. But phase two, what we can do is pull in syslog information from our newly running Palo Alto Networks firewall that's been running for, say, two or three weeks. We can pull in syslog information and have the migration tool tell us what its recommendations are for which application IDs to use. So we can start looking at applications regardless of port or protocol. So that's phase two. Phase three is the one that's really gonna concern us today. And that's where we're able to add in advanced feature sets like security profiles and do large scale changes. So that's what we'll do today. In order to make this work, what I've done is I've added a, my panorama as a device within the migration tool. And you'll see that here. Now, when you add panorama as a device within the migration tool, it will also add all of the devices that the panorama manages. Currently, I'm only managing one VM series firewall as part of my panorama because this is a lab box. Um, but if you had a production panorama device, uh, it would pull in all of those uh, managed ne next generation firewalls as well. So I've pulled in panorama and as part of that, what I can do is I can look at the configuration and my security policies and we can do changes based off of that. And you'll see here that I have these seven policies and you'll see that they match up to my seven policies in my panorama. All right, so I've pulled in the configuration. Now what I can do is I can do a, what we call a multi-edit within the migration tool. And you'll see that button down here where we can edit multiple rules. But what you first have to do is select which of those rules you're going to use. Now we'll use mouse clicks and we can either use shift. So if I start at the top, hit shift and hit the bottom of that range, I can select a whole group or I can use the control key as well to select individual ones. So let's say I don't want to select this uh, deny rule, but do want to select the allow rule above it. I can use the control key and click on that as well. For this demonstration, we're just going to use policies three through seven here. And what I'm going to do is add the strict profile to each of those. So you saw before that none of our policies had the strict profile enabled. We're going to go and do this as a mass change and push that out to our panorama. So I've got policies three through seven selected and I'm gonna click the multi edit button. And what you'll see is that our multiple, multiple security policies editor comes up and we're able to make changes across all of these. So let's say I wanted to add um, ICMP, a ping capability to each of these policies or maybe um, AD access to each of these, it would be very easy to do. As far as the profiles go, what I can do is we can select profiles and make sure you do this. Um, that way it will turn on the, the profiles capability in any of those policies that you don't already have that turned on in. And then we're going to select our vulnerability profiles and we're going to select strict. And then I'm going to click on save. So just that easy. The next thing I'm going to do is because I've added this device, what I can do is send this configuration over via API. So I'm going to go to my API output manager and based on what I've saved, I can generate an API request. So I'll click on this step one and generate an API request and you'll see that it went from initializing to done. And the next thing I can do is send the API request and you'll see uh, right after I select 
where I'm going to send it. So I'll send it to Panorama and make sure your device group is set as well. We're going to send the API request. So we'll go from initializing and it's sending and it should be done right now. Okay. So we've just sent our API request and that should have changed our configuration. So let's change this over. And what we're looking for is all of those policies that now have strict as our security profile. And you'll see that that's three through seven, the ones that we just made our adjustment on. So I would just need to do a commit and then I'm good to go. All right, so very quickly, we can make changes to a large number of policies and really have some good effect on how we control our security profiles across our entire environment. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching and stay secure.